This beautiful meadow is home to many intriguing species and their daily interactions. Today we will be looking into the lives of three organisms, the large blue butterfly, the Miramica ant, and the ichneumon wasp. This is a large blue butterfly, a species now endangered. The pregnant female butterfly carefully chooses a plant close to the nest of an ant known as the Miramica ant to lay her eggs on. Once the butterfly eggs hatch, the caterpillars feed on the leaf that they hatched on for about three weeks. Then, they fall to the ground. Due to the strategic choice of the mother butterfly to lay her eggs close to the ant nest, the caterpillar easily comes into contact with ants. This contact leads to a very beneficial interaction between the ant and the caterpillar. These ants are worker ants that forage food and care for the ant larvae in the nest. A caterpillar's scent is exactly that of the ant larvae. The caterpillars also produce vibratory sounds that mimic ant communication noises. These adaptations cause the ant to adopt the caterpillar and carry it back to their nest to take care of it. The ants milk the larvae for honeydew, a delicacy for the ants that would otherwise have to forage for under the leaves. This relationship now becomes mutualistic because both the ant and caterpillar are benefiting from the interaction. The caterpillars are distinctly different in appearance from the ant larvae, which are clear and smaller. However, because the caterpillars continually produce the pheromones that cause them to smell exactly like the ant larvae, they are treated like the ant larvae. All may seem well and happy in the nest for the caterpillars. However, the ichneumon wasp anxiously waits to disrupt the peace. <laughs> the wasp seeks to get its own larvae into the ant's nest. It goes about this in an aggressive way. The wasp recognizes the specific nests which house the caterpillars. It is still a mystery as to how the wasp distinguishes these nests from all the others. The wasp enters the ant nest and is immediately attacked by the ants. The wasp counteracts these attacks by releasing a pheromone that makes the ants combat one another. With the ants out of the way, the wasp locates the nursery chamber where it climbs upon the defenseless caterpillars. A few ants try to fight off the wasp, but they are no match. The wasp injects each caterpillar with an egg of its own. In order to ensure that her egg survives, the wasp injects a highly specialized poly-DNA virus into the caterpillar along with the egg through her ovipositor. The DNA virus prevents the caterpillar's phagocytic hemocytes and its immune system from encapsulating and killing the wasp egg. After it has parasitized the caterpillars, the wasp simply leaves the nest. Slowly but surely, the ant colony becomes free of the effects of the wasp's pheromones and returns to normal. With the caterpillars parasitized on the inside, but while on the outside, the ants continue to care for each of them. Once the caterpillars are fully grown, they form a hard protective case around themselves called a chrysalis. This is a normal part of any caterpillar's life cycle. The ants continue to care for each chrysalis as their own by cleaning it regularly. Once the caterpillars have grown into adults inside the chrysalis, they begin to hatch. From the first comes a large blue butterfly. The butterfly says farewell to its foster family and flutters out into the open world, ready to repeat the cycle of its parents. Now others begin to hatch as well. Out of this one, however, comes a wasp. This wasp grew from the corpse of the parasitized caterpillar. While the caterpillar turned itself into a butterfly pupa in the chrysalis, the wasp egg inside it hatched, ate the butterfly pupa, thus killing it, and used the chrysalis to grow into a wasp. The wasp that hatches has the amazing ability to distinguish not only ant larvae from caterpillars, but also ant nests containing these caterpillars, allowing the wasp to continue parasitizing the mutualistic relationship between the large blue butterfly and the Miramica ant. So really, this three species interaction is a parasitism of a mutualism, because the wasp benefits at the expense of both the butterfly and the ant. Thus, it's always a guessing game as to what will emerge out of the caterpillar's chrysalis. The magnificent large blue butterfly or the clever ichneumon wasp. One thing is for sure though, it definitely will not be an ant.